Thanks a lot, sir. That was a lot of nothing. Well, that's par for the course. Cheer up, old buddy. This one may be a birdie. Oh, sure. I'd like to talk to you. Prove it. See that? Okay. Good morning. I'm Detective Corso. This is Detective Ward. You must be Miss Graham. Till Marlowe. That's easy. Who is it? It's the police, Edie. Oh, yeah. Hello? What do you want? Uh, may we come in? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. It's about a neighbor of yours, Ellen Loring. What did she do? She's dead. Murdered, I'm sorry to say. Oh, no. I knew it. I knew it. Here? In this building? It happened in her apartment sometime last night. I'll bet he did it, Jill. That pervert across the courtyard. Edie, you're out of your mind. You think he isn't? There's a, there's a man in the building across the courtyard. The window right behind the fire escape stairs. Well, he hides behind there with a pair of binoculars every day around 6 o'clock. All night, too, maybe. Just to see what he can see. You sure about this? Of course, I've seen him. I, I knew he was a pervert. I didn't know he was a murderer. She had the apartment right below you. No, I never met her. Scram? Oh, I, I don't even know what she looks like. Like this? We found this in her apartment. We don't know when it was taken, but it couldn't have been too long ago. I did know her. I mean, I, I saw her in the elevator once or twice. With anybody, do you remember? No, she was alone. Did you happen to hear anything last night? When she was killed? I left for the theater at 7, city center. I'm a dancer. I was out for the evening, too, till midnight. Quarter past, actually. I suppose by that time. Yeah. We're fairly sure it happened by that time. Just how did it happen? She was strangled. If you think of anything later on, either of you, give us a call. The only thing I'm going to think about is moving immediately. Oh, come on, Edie. No, I mean it. This crazy neighborhood. Those hippies. And that... That peak freak next door. Well, don't worry about it, Miss Graham. We'll check him out. You should have, long ago. We would have if you reported him long ago. What right have you people got to come in here and question me like this? This is still the United States of America, you know. Take it easy, Mr. Johnny. We just want to get some information. For me? Why? Why me? Because you live next door to where it happened. Oh, that means I did it. I killed this Miss Ellen, whatever her name is. Ellen Loring, not necessarily. Did you? No! I didn't sit foot out of this apartment all night. What did you do last night? Nothing. I came home from work the same time I always do. 5.30, quarter to 6. I fixed dinner, I read for a while, then I turned in about 10. How well did you know Miss Loring? Why don't you two guys get together? I told you I never heard her name until today. But you didn't know what she looked like. Well, of course, the afternoon papers had a lot of pictures. No, we mean in the flesh. You did see her that way a lot, didn't you, with these? No, never. Well, how come? You use them a lot, don't you? When I go to the ballpark or a racetrack. 
I don't use them to look in other people's windows, and I'll thank you not to imply anything different. Oh, no, not me. The people in that building across the court, they say they see you all the time peeping through the curtains with these glasses. That's an out-and-out -out lie. I wouldn't do a dirty thing like that. So you just sat in this room all night, and you never looked once. I told you no. And I'm not going to tell you anything else. Now, get out of here. Mr. Janney, if you're not telling us the truth, we'll be back. But then you know that, don't you? We found these in the Loring apartment, her boyfriend. Miss Loring was a very popular girl. Well, she lasted. All right, run these guys down. What about Jenny? Well, what about him? All you told me is the girl stabbed him as a peeper. You said no. It doesn't mean anything. Oh? I think he's lying. Yeah, Janin did come on kind of strong, Lieutenant. Wouldn't you? Peeping isn't a crime exactly, but it's nothing they hand out merit badges for. Of course he'd deny it. So? Maybe peeping isn't the whole story on Janin. I think we ought to check him out all the way. Who's stopping you? I'm sure not putting him in the clear on the kill. Okay, Lieutenant. Let's go, Jeff. No. You got these photos. Why don't you think you'll need them? This one? Yeah. This one? And, uh, this one here. You mean Miss Loring went out with all three of these guys at the same time? Going out, having them over. You know, in her apartment, night and day. Which one was her favorite, Mr. Andrews, do you know? Yeah. This one. Always sending flowers. Mr. Andrews? Yeah. Oh, hello, Miss Graham. Good morning. Hi. I'm sorry to bother you, Tom. It's all right. What's the trouble? Well, it's about the oven. It's not working, and my mother's coming over to dinner tonight. You think you can fix it sometime today? I'll get right on it. We're done, huh? Yes, yes. Thank you for your time. Ah, glad to help out. Okay, Miss Graham. I'll go straight up. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, what are you doing about the pervert next door? The pervert? We're checking him out. You haven't arrested him yet. Miss Graham, if you have anything new to tell us, we'd be glad to hear it. But we don't need your advice on how to do our job. Nobody in the building saw Janney go out. They didn't hear him either. He could have sneaked out, though. Easy. No alibi, then. Anything else? One witness. A guy who saw Janney talking to the Loring woman on the street one morning about a week ago. And Janney said he didn't know her at all. This is starting to shape. We also put a little heat on Janney. Office, friends, just so he won't forget us. Did you find out anything? No. He's a solid citizen. Here's something I got from my identification. April 63. Janney was booked for beating up a young woman in a Riverdale motel. Somebody picked up in a bar. He got one to five. Well, how much time did he do? 18 months, model prisoner. The psychiatrist thought he had a good chance to straighten out. Yeah? He's still in therapy. Dr. Rodenko, East 83rd Street. We'll check it out. No, not you. You ask a couple more questions over at Janney's office. I was there already. Well, go again. And make sure he finds out about it. The guy's got a short fuse, Lieutenant. You want it to explode? I want the straight story on what he did that night. He hasn't told it yet. Maybe if he gets mad enough, he will. Stay out of my life. No, wait a second. Please. I want to talk to you now so I can explain. You want to talk? Okay, let's talk. Problems, he has. Certainly. This is young gentleman. For that, he is in therapy. Oh, what sort of problems, doctor? Mr. Jenny is my patient. Surely you can't expect me to betray his confidence. We're asking you to cooperate with the police department of this city. Dr. Adinko. We're investigating a murder. We've got to ask questions, Jenny. Mm -hmm. We've got to find out just as much as we can. About me? Why? I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't touch you, Morley. I swear it. You've got to believe me. You lied to me before, didn't you? About your people, didn't you? 
He is not the sort of man to commit the crime of the sort you're talking about. This is your opinion. It is my professional opinion, supported by my knowledge of the patient. Well, we need some of that knowledge in order to do our job. Mr. Janney's treatment, his cure, is my first obligation. I can't risk it to help you. No matter what he's done. All right, Anna. I'll admit it. I do look sometimes. I'm fighting it, though. I've been fighting it for years. It's a sickness, see? That's why I go to Dr. Redenko. But I didn't kill Ellen Loring. Who did? Mr. Janney was convicted of aggravated assault against a young woman, right? Yes. The prison psychiatrist, you read his report. Yes, I did. He said Janney was a severely neurotic personality with paranoid tendencies, meaning he had a potential for violent behavior, especially against women. Is that right? I would say so, at the time. What about now, Doctor? You've been treating him for years. Does he still have that potential? I don't know. I wasn't watching that night. How come? I was on top of it, this sickness I have. I wanted to look like that, but I didn't. Uh... See, so sometimes I... Sometimes I can't help it, I gotta look. The night before last, this wasn't one of those nights. You sat in your room like a good little boy. Right, that's right. You didn't so much as open the curtains. No, no, that's right. I was on top of it, I'm telling you. But if you keep pushing me, I don't know how much more of this I can take. Enough, gentlemen. As long as Mr. Jenny remains in my care, I will protect him. Suppose other people need protection from him. This I would doubt. I'm not interested in all this psycho stuff. I need information. I'm going to keep asking until I get it. I told you. I told you. Yeah, and maybe tomorrow you'll tell me different. No. Yes. I would be more surprised to learn that Mr. Janney had any connection with this crime at all. No, that is wrong. I would not be surprised. I would be astonished. You run along now. It's been a rough day. Rough? You don't know, fella. Maybe I do. Go on home and get some sleep. It'll be rougher tomorrow and every day after that. Till I go crazy? Until you tell the truth. Hello, Mr. Andrews. Huh? You said you had something for me. Oh, yeah. These. For Miss Loring. The weekly shipment from Georgie Boy. Mm -hmm. I guess he forgot to cancel the order, huh? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Andrews. Sure. Thank you. Hey, uh, don't you need these for uh, evidence or something? No, no. You keep them. What do you mean, is that all? What do you expect, Jenny, to give me a signed confession? Oh, no, no. You did fine, man. How did he take it? Well, Lieutenant? He's a busy man, fella. He waved me out as soon as I started to tell him. You know the lieutenant. I told you, Court, so I told you. Lean on him and he'll tell it all to you. Now, on your way. Oh, great, Court, sir. That's great. I didn't know you did impersonations. Now, what do you do for an encore? Put your foot in your mouth? I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Uh, Johnny was just telling me that uh, he had a little run-in with Janny yesterday. The guy admits to being a peeper. That's right. Says it's a sickness he's trying to control. Did he say he was peeping the night of the murder? What he saw? No, but we're working on it. We think he'll spill it in a couple of days. Only I want him to spill it today. Well, it seems like we got the killer all of a sudden. One of Loring's boyfriends. If Janney's will identify him, it's a lock. One of her boyfriends? Yeah, George H. Russell. I got on to him through the super. Used to send her a dozen roses every week. Same floor, standing order. Lucky for us, he forgot to cancel. And Janney gets promoted from prime suspect to star witness. Sent her flowers every week and he killed her. He says no, but his alibi's a joke. Ryan located a guy who said Loring dumped Russell a week ago. He swore he'd break her in two if she didn't take him back. Did you pick him up? Ryan's on it. Why don't you go over and get Janny? He should be in his office now. Right. You can go too, John. Unless you want to stick around and work on your act. Me, Miss Graham. You're one of my favorite people. I'm <laughs> No kidding, Miss. I mean it. I'm sorry. But I've had it with this neighborhood right up to here. On oh, account of what happened to Miss Loring, huh? That was pretty bad. Police haven't done anything. Now they want me to give them my new address so they can annoy me some more. <laughs> they don't listen when you tell them things. They still haven't done anything about that peeping Tom next door. Peeping Tom? Was, was that a joke? They think so, I don't. Oh, wait a minute. You're telling me there's a peeper in one of my buildings? With binoculars, Tom. Look. Uh, the third fire escape from the top. The second window from the right. Fire escape from the top. It's 
it's Mr. Janney. No, well, he... He hides behind there with his glasses every night. I'm not making it up, Tom. I've seen it. Boy. You never know about people in this town, do you? Easy, fellas. See, Mr. Russell? Nothing to worry about. I still don't like it. It's your decision, Mr. Russell. You're advised of your rights. What do I know? Look, I, uh, I can't help it if I forgot exactly where I went and what I did that night. I, I got stoned. Well, I want you to remember what you're looking at now. The detectives in this room. What about them? I don't, I don't look like anything very special. Well, maybe you got something there. But they're all about your height and build. Same general description, right? Yeah. Except that they've got their coats off. So you take yours off, too. Now you all more or less look alike, right? Yeah, I suppose. Well, remember that, Mr. Russell. Remember, we didn't load the dice against you. In the event they come up snake eyes. Johnny? Lieutenant Haynes, thanks for coming down. Wrong, Lieutenant. Thank them for dragging me down. Well, this won't take long. Just want you to look through here. Why? What's in there? Six men. You think one of them strangled Ellen Loring. I want you to pick them out. That's the whole deal, okay? No, I can't do that. He can or won't? Both. Look, Lieutenant, you're wasting your time with me. I can't identify anybody in there because I didn't see anyone in the alluring apartment that night. I told you guys I didn't even look out the window. That's right, you told us. We just don't believe you, that's all. Look, I'm getting fed up with this harassment. I've told you everything I'm going to. If you don't believe me, that's your problem. No, it's everybody's if you stick to a story like that. We all plan to let a killer go free when you can help nail him. Or let us book an innocent man when you can help clear him. I can't. What can't? You recognize the guy you saw in the alluring apartment or you don't? That's all you have to do. What is that, a big deal? All right, if you don't mind wasting your time. I recognize one. Third guy from the left, the blonde with the black and white tie. Ah, bingo, huh? Georgie boy? Right. Thank you, Mr. Jenny. For what? I only recognize him because he used to show up one or two nights at the Loring apartment. I didn't see him there that night. Now, you know you're lying, Jenny. Why? What's the point? Tell me, Lieutenant. Suppose I said I had seen him there that night. Would that be the end of it? Wouldn't I also have to sign a statement? Sure. And wouldn't I also have to testify? That's right. Peeping Tom says he saw a killer. Real neat, huh? Neat headline. Depends on how you testify. You don't have to say you make a habit out of looking through those glasses. Could have been just that one night. Stick with that and you're home free. How long do you think I could stick to that under cross-examination? Not a million years. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I wouldn't help you even if I could. All right, Mr. Jenny. May I go now? If you want to. What do you think? Stay on him. And drop in him from time to time. Take him through that cockamamie startle that's coming out of his ears. And phone calls. The later, the better. That's a lot of heat. That's nothing. If I have to, I'll roast him. He's going to tell us exactly what he saw.
So many boyfriends, he figured one more wouldn't hurt. She didn't see it that way, though. He tried to argue her into it. And she lost. Yeah. It's too bad. She was really something to look at. That's why he jumped you. He found out about you in the glasses. Thought maybe you'd seen him. I didn't. You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't even look out the window that night. You know something, Johnny? I don't believe he did. If he had, he'd have blown the whistle on Andrews right away. Yeah? To save his own neck. And risk all those neat headlines? What about it, Johnny? If you had seen him kill Miss Loring, would you have told us? I don't know. I don't really know. 